I'm here today to make you aware of a 2018 covert operation led by the Vancouver Police Department's Counter-Exploitation Unit, a unit that focuses on issues of exploitation in sex work. With the assistance from the E-Division RCMP's Counter-Exploitation Team, the goal of this operation was to combat the exploitation of the most vulnerable segment of our society, our youth. The operation was divided into two projects, Project Serrated and Project Steadfast. The result was the arrest of 47 men over a nine separate arrest days. The VPD's counter-exploitation unit works hard to shed light on how adults use online escort directories and social media to acquire the so sexual services of underage sex industry workers. This criminal activity concerns police immensely and I have huge issues with Johns and pimps gaining gratification or financial benefit through the exploitation of young people in our city. Last year, our detectives began a sting, an undercover operation, to proactively target adults seeking or willing to purchase the sexual services of people under the age of 18. The premise was simple. Detectives from our counter-exploitation unit posted decoy advertisements on web escort listings and social media platforms for sexual services. After we made contact through text with the sex trade consumers or Johns, our detectives advised them through texting the subjects were in the ad were between the ages of 15 and 17 years of age. Once detectives established the age, a sex act, and fees with the Johns, the Johns were directed to a hotel room. In the room, they found VPD detectives and uniformed officers instead of teenage girls. Over nine separate days, the VPD arrested 47 men under Section 286.1, subsection 2 of the Criminal Code of Canada for obtaining for consideration the sexual services of a person under 18 years of age. This is an indictable offense that carries a mandatory minimum sentence of six months. To date, Crown Council has approved charges against seven individuals. We continue to work with Crown Council for additional charges which should occur over the next several months. I want to be very clear about what this project or these projects were not about. They were not about the sex trade in general. They were not about sexual relations between two consenting adults. These projects were about identifying, arresting, and seeking criminal charges against predators who were actively seeking to have sex with teenagers. These projects were about preventing the exploitation of our youth. The 47 men we arrested are from all walks of life, ethnicity, education, and employment. The list includes, but is not limited to, a school trustee, a member of an outlaw motorcycle gang, a school teacher, and a fireman. I want to thank our counter-exploitation unit for meticulously conducting the investigation and gathering the evidence. I can take questions now, and thank you very much for your patience. The, the, there weren't actual girls. It was the undercover, it was the police officer that was posing as girls over text. Is there an age range for the men that you see here? I, I can't give an age range. Perhaps afterwards I can find out. How many of you again to the school trustee? School trustee, member of an outlaw motorcycle gang, a school teacher, and a firefighter. We won't be releasing them at this time until Why? because we're a number of them have not been uh, charged and secondly we want the matter to go before the courts before we're going to be releasing their names it's not before the courts yet so i'm not i'm not about to release the names i'm not aware of what the situation is at this time That's a very good question. Uh, this has been an ongoing issue, and since I um, became the deputy chief in charge of the investigation division, I've met with a number of community stakeholders. And the concern, expressed concern, was Johns that were victimizing, victimizing youth. My concern was finding an investigative strategy that would prove to be effective, that would garner evidence, that would meet the charge approval threshold. And as a result, I sent members of 
my counter exploitation unit across the country to look at what other agencies were utilizing. And there's a number in eastern Canada, as well as the eastern seaboard of the United States, that have used this investigative strategy. We subsequently met with Crown Council, explained what the strategy was that we were going to employ. They were satisfied that we would glean evidence that they would that would meet their threshold of charge approval, and then we went forward and did it. The other issue is, as some of you know, we've targeted some high-profile high pimps in the past. The issue for us, too, is the resources that we require to conduct those investigations, and this is something that we can do comparatively uh, far more expeditiously. Well, certainly creep creatures is something we've discussed. That wasn't the motivation, but I think we can demonstrate that if we do it properly within the, the letter of the law, that we will affect not only uh, we may be able to make arrests, but we'll be able to obtain the evidence that will secure convictions, not only charges, but convictions. But the other thing is, as I, as I said, there's community groups. Deborah's Gate was mentioned by earlier, uh, as well, who's, which is part of the Salvation Army, the University of uh, women's club who I've have listened to on numerous occasions and have been very strong advocates for the work that we're doing here today. You've got 47 men. Personally, were you surprised the number was that high? Uh, yes, and, I, and it, was, it wasn't very difficult. Um, what's shocking is, uh, in speaking with the investigators, is we're looking at uh, potentially um, hundreds of chat streams that were occurring over the social media platform with the police officers that were posing as teenage girls. And basically they, you couldn't, they had to turn down people. They didn't have enough time given the shifts and the number of days that were dedicated to this investigation to get additional charges. And the other thing is you don't know who's who in the zoo until you get them in the door of the hotel room. So we have people that start texting and chatting that might stop and return. And then some individuals that just seek gratification by texting and thinking that they're talking to a teenage girl or texting with a teenage girl. So How many it, that's a very good question. It's, I would suggest the vast majority of the men that were seeking uh, sex industry workers were looking for adult uh, females, and the number then so the vast majority would turn down the offer, and then. But it's the, what's disconcerting is that the small group of men that were, in fact, excited, were, in fact, discovered that the, the person they were communicating with or believed the person they were communicating with was underage, they were more excited about that. No, they would agree on the act. They'd agree on the, the fee and the location. There were 25 officers that were involved in, in, in the takedown each night. And you had everything from people that would basically acquiesce and others that would fight. Um, and each of the men that were arrested were interviewed. Many of them provided uh, you know, statements, uh, providing an exp attempted to provide an explanation. Some dismissed the officers. Some told them to actually go out and find criminals to arrest. Was this Craigslist that you were I won't comment on the social media platform that we utilize because it could compromise future investigations or ongoing investigations, but it suffice to say there's a, a myriad of social media platforms that we could utilize doing this. So I, I, what I'm saying is there's just not one, there's any number. So anyone who thinks, okay, well, you know, I'll, I'll roll the dice and go, try to go to another platform, we're, we could very easily be there. How concerning is that for you um, as a law enforcement official that these men who actually came into a room under the guise that they were getting sex with an underage girl told you, we'll go find some real criminals. That there is a mindset that perhaps that isn't criminal to some people. How concerning is that to you? And a, a teacher among them, a fireman among them, a soldier among them? Oh, it's very concerning, but I, after 31 years in policing, I, there's not too much I haven't heard. I was in sex crimes for four years, as was a number of the investigators that are in the counter-exploitation unit. We've dealt with child abuse situations. I've dealt with pedophiles over the years extensively, and I, I hate to say this, and it's going to sound jaded, but I wasn't surprised. Are you going to this investigation I, I beg your pardon? Given the success that we've had, I think that we will, we're certainly looking forward or anticipating that we're going to continue this type of project. And I would like to continue this project with the RCMP, who have been 
uh, very, very helpful and supportive in, in, in our efforts. Are all these Vancouver men that were charged No, they weren't. Yes. No, that's a, that's a good question, but no, we're, we're posing as young women. The same happened in Vancouver, though, obviously, the hotel you were at was a Vancouver. Yes. Can you tell us what the hotel it was in? No. Uh, can I just clarify that none of these men knew each other? There's no indication to have the sex ring or anything like this or a kind of an organizational group? That's a very good question. There's no evidence to indicate that these men knew each other, but there is. Can I comment on that? Sure. Uh, is it the a PERB? There's a blog or a website. Prostitute Escort Review Board, and so our uh, counter-exploitation unit members were also monitoring that board on the internet, and they would comment on, you know, and grade, if you will, or score uh, sex industry workers, and there was certainly a lot of messaging going back and forth that the, the police, the Vancouver police, were out doing this sting. But I guess, you know, the, 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 the drive for some of these men was such that they would disregard those, those warnings. Yes, they're aware. So the employers of the firefighter, of the self-defense school trustee and the teacher have been aware? Ongoing. Ongoing. But the school trustee and the teacher aren't still in the schools. I don't believe that's the case. Have they been charged? Of the seven charged, do they, I can see we have a particular interest in the teacher. Have they, are they among the ones who've been charged? Yes. Yes, they are. And the firefighter? Yes. Can you tell us? No, I'm not about to release any details at this time. Were any of the men from outside of Canada residents? Uh, there, was, uh, there was at least one tourist. Okay, does that look like I don't have that information. I don't have that information. Of the seven that were charged, uh, did any of them have previous criminal backgrounds related to sex crimes of any kind? I don't believe so. What about of the 47 arrested? That's a good question, but I don't have that information. The concern about that is if, the, if they've been recruited at that age, and even if they're adults and they're over 18, if they are being exploited, if they are being victimized, if they are being, you know, forced into the, continued to, to be in the sex industry, then we want to be made aware of that. And I don't think there's any police officer, Vancouver police or otherwise, that wouldn't be willing to step forward and assist if they require assistance. That said, our counter-exploitation unit has investigated, as many of you know, individuals, pimps that are, that are victimizing adults in the sex industry that don't wish to be in there and are being exploited. So that's what we'll do. And what about exiting the Well, just by way of example, and it was mentioned earlier, uh, Deborah's Gate is one example where we can, we, we've drawn upon their assistance on a number of occasions. And the, the, the Deborah's Gate is, is one resource that not only assists us in Vancouver, but, but uh, other agencies across the country. It, 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 there's no issue with the budget. It's not that costly. So I, I've spent far more money on other investigations, so it's not significant at all. It wasn't even, an, it wasn't even a concern. It didn't even enter my mind. And it, it is 286.1, subsection 2 of the criminal code, which is obtaining for consideration the sexual services of a person under 18 years of age. I'm going to leave the matter before the courts and let it let it uh, fold out as it will. Or uh, and I'm not prepared to release any names because we've got all these other names that are are individuals that are the that are whose files are being reviewed by Crown. So you just said to what extent you were working with other federal counterparts on the software. We uh, thank you. So we were on a conference. We had said had members on a conference in Ontario that were presented with this uh, in, investigative strategy. I believe it was a York Regional. And when, the mem when my members came back from the conference, I sent them to other, other um, agencies, police agencies that were also utilizing this. And then as a result, 
we came back. We've met with our counterparts with the RCMP. We've invited them out to the takedowns. So we're, we're looking forward to collaborating with them uh, as well because, of course, the RCMP are the provincial police and this, their counter-exploitation team would be of assistance perhaps in, in furthering this, types of, this type of investigation. Between June and November of 20, yeah. There would be two separate four day, four, four or five day takedown days, arrest days. And with social media changes, I know you can't say too much, but are, are these common sites that, you know, children are using that by bringing in as part of this investigation? I don't know if they, I would say they were common sites that children would use, but they could be uh, sites that uh, anyone who wanted to get, uh, you know, advertised could. So there's a myriad of them, and if you go on, you don't have to identify yourself as being under 18, but they could very well allow someone who is under 18 to go and advertise and, and, and seek business. Did they present themselves as under 18 right away, or did they start a conversation and then say it? Well, the conversation would be initiated by the John, and then during the conversation they'd say, by the way, I'm between 15 and 17, or 15, 16, 17, they'd say specifically. And then that would that would either cause the John to say thanks but no thanks, or in, intrigue them. Is it, is it going to be uh, expanded over the country? Well, it was not. It's not for me to say because we're, it's the Vancouver Police Department. I, at this point, given the success we've had, I would certainly be supportive of it. So given that this contact that you had was through text messaging. Yes. No, it, it, that doesn't. What the, the text val provides us with evidence with respect to the Johns that we arrested. That's, that's compelling evidence to support a criminal charge, that they were in fact communicating in real time with our investigators, thinking that they were underage girls. But no, we don't have enough evidence then to go you after... Have evidence, but you have their contacts, like you know they are um, part of the buyers. Yeah. Arguably, yes, we could potentially find out that someone sent a text from a phone number. Right. Is there a date that they were charged altogether? Has it been seven over the past, you know, couple months? Sorry, guys, just uh, after your question, we have time for one more question after that. So it's, it's gradual. What we have to do is we have to have the evidence uh, examined. So as you can imagine, the cell phone would be a piece of evidence that would have to be examined, and that all takes time. And, of course, we're also working within recent case law, uh, Regina versus Jordan out of the Supreme Court. So there's a reluctance to lay a charge until such time as all the evidence is collected, all the T's are crossed, all the I's are dotted. So... It's been like the, the, the seven-word charge on one thing no. last week. It's been gradual since the James have come That's correct. Did all the... Uh, yeah, last question. Did all the uh, takedowns go smoothly? Was there any incidents worth those? I believe there was at least one person that uh, well, wanted to fight. But we had enough presence there. No one hurt. No. All right. All right. Thank you, Deputy.